pants. Now, as I've shown in lesson one, or actually, excuse me, as I've shown in lesson two at the very beginning, lesson one in lesson two, that a lot of practitioners use hands like this, see that? They warm up, and we're talking about Reiki practitioners, there's a lot of energy practitioners who use their hands like this, okay? And then they tell you by warming your hands up at that particular point, you can emanate out energy, okay? Now, as you see, I just did that. And I did actually show you in a different lesson that by doing that, you can emanate, you can actually uh, bring forth energy, right? But is it really 100% necessary? Not once you really get honed, because then you can just do it simply by thinking it or projecting it, okay? Just like that. Now, I've seen a lot of energy teachers um, specifically teach about um, being able to feel energy off the body like this. And as you can see, it is causing energy movement within the, vi the environment, okay? So as you can see, everything that I do different causes a different effect, like this. Different effect than what I just did here, okay? So we're gonna make sure that you can see that different behaviors is causing absolutely different effects. All right. Our hands, we naturally use them for much of everything. We often uh, accept people with our hands when we embrace, and then we often reject people and push them out when we don't want them around, okay? Now, as you can see, the act of projecting actually pushes energy quite easy. When it comes to energy, we're talking, you need to have the entire spectrum, mind, body, and spirit. There's a lot of people that say, it's not telekinesis if you're using your body to do it, because it has to be entirely your mind. However, the body is an extension of the mind. The body is an extension of everything, especially in a physical reality such as this, okay? The body is an extension and it is a piece of technology. This is an energy system. You got a brain that is uh, using any amount of electricity at a time, performing millions upon millions of tasks, stuff of which you don't even know about that it's performing, okay? You've got a heart, which has an incredible amount of power that powers the entire body system, okay? That's where it's getting the majority of its energy from. It is cranking out blood. Blood is cranking out oxygen, and that oxygen is cranking out energy, energy of which the body uses. So, learning how to use one's technology is probably the strongest thing that one could do. But one has to know how energy operates. And most energy, as I've stated before, it operates in spirals, in vortexes, okay? Uh, that's the reason why we have such a thing called vortex-based mathematics, the Fibonacci code, okay? It's because everything down here operates in vortexes. Look at your fingertips and you'll see what? Spirals. Your personal interface into the universal mainframe. Plants grow out in spirals. Matter of fact, I can't tell you how many plants or flowers that absolutely demonstrate that. You can actually see it even here, where everything's twisty, turny, sort of thing. Everything comes up and out in spirals. Most plants are actually growing towards grid lines, not necessarily the sun. They're growing towards grid lines, which are extensions of the sun. Just like my uh, 
body is an extension of my soul, the grid lines are an extension of the sun. So what makes all this possible? Certain times when I want to get more energy, I'll do certain types of breathing. Certain times when I want to get more energy, I'll do certain types of humming. We've covered this before. As a matter of fact, there will be actual lessons about the breathing and the humming. You see that? Just adding a little bit of breath. And I add to the amount of push that there is and the amount of energy that I'm using. Now, do I need the breathing to push loads of energy? No. But it's only if I'm wanting to make certain points. Do I need to hum or buzz if I'm accelerating the particles? No. But I tell you what, as a sound and it being a frequency, when you do, We can clearly see that the frequency causes an effect in the environment. It's hitting the grids too. So if I couple the effect, using my body, the projection, my mind, my imagination, plus the frequency, I create many different ways to move the same thing. Okay? Now you see right there, turning my hand in spirals with my fingers right there, like that. Okay, another thing to do is circular motion, which is like this. That's another decent technique in being able to access a little more energy from your environment. But again, the most important thing that you're doing is you're projecting from your body's core. You have a toroidal field that your body runs and operates on and it is constantly uh, flushing energy in and out of it right through your center up through the top through the bottom and it's going out at about 20 feet okay so if you know how to use your energy system and you know how to use your uh, what they call a Merkaba field then you're easily able to reach in and play with energy as if it were the easiest thing in the world to do which technically Ultimately, it really actually is. Um, but mastering it is a whole different animal altogether. Playing with it, almost anyone can play with it. Mastering it, two different things. Because the most important thing that you want to achieve when it comes to all this is achieving and getting the same results twice. So I want to know that if I come in here and I start playing around, you see this, that I'm going to get these results every time. I want to come up and do it once like this and be like, uh-oh, didn't work. I want to be able to come right into it and go, you know, especially if I have to show people this, I can't afford to be able to mess up. See that? I can't afford to mess up. If I'm showing this to you now, can't afford to mess up. If you're here face to face with me learning, can't afford to mess up. So I have to be able to repeat these same processes over and over again, and that's the most important thing for any energy practitioner is to be able to repeat the process. Repetition and being able to repeat it demonstrates that it is something that you've actually honed. But if you can't do that, that means you have a lot of work left. And you can't come in on days where it's, where there's solar flares and where it's already naturally windy day because of those solar flares 
film and then think, wow, I am an aerokinesis master because I can guarantee you, if not the next day or the next day after, all that energy is going to be buffered in and then you're going to be like this trying to figure out why you can't move it again, okay? So instead, you have to be able to perform both on days where solar flare energy is low or solar flare energy is high, there is none, or there's plenty. You have to be able to perform the same each time. The other thing is, is you have to be able to, on solar flare days, turn things down. Most people have a very hard time on solar flare days turning things, or, yeah, turning things down. They can easily turn them up, but turning it down is a whole separate issue. So, Michael Grubb from Evolved Ministry, we're teaching about, again, ambient potential, maximizing ambient energy, and in, uh, using your own body system as the core of which you're, you're pulling your system or your energy from. Then we're going to work on using energy from uh, other systems, plants, okay, uh, the sun which is primarily what you want to use mostly. You don't want to use too much off of uh, your fellow man. That's for darn sure. As a matter of fact, you never want to use energy off of people. So I want to put that in there right now. Um, unless a person has given you specific right and permission to do it, don't ever use someone else's energy. There is no reason to merge with someone else. There's no reason to use their energy system. That is what is known as vampirism. I want to make sure that gets heard right now. You do not borrow other people's energy from them. Okay? You do not put things in them without their permission. You do not merge with people without their permission. Secondly, it's probably unsafe to merge at all for a variety of reasons, but I've already talked about this in another uh, uh, episode, so we're just going to leave that alone for right now. But. The act of doing such things and imprinting people's information on you and pulling energy from them, especially when they are not aware of it, that is called vampirism. It is negativity. It is an inward magnetic of which people are using to absorb. So that's a no-no. Anytime you do use energy, you ask the system of which you're borrowing from. If it says no, you're out of luck. Okay. If it trusts and loves you and you've been working to get your ego out and get all that negativity out, it's going to be a lot easier to tap into this stuff. All right, Michael Grubb from Evolve Ministry, learning how to use energy, project, okay? It's a lot deeper than just trying to feel yourself, okay? But it is important, I can tell you now, that you start to work with your entire body and feel through, so that way you can see how your own energy affects you, okay? And then the next thing to do, is to see how your energy affects other things. Now, some people are gonna be able to go right outside and they're gonna be able to get effects. Other people, it's gonna take them a little while longer, but one way or the next, you have to practice it. By practicing it, that's what makes you good. And going outside and being in touch with all of this is what makes it possible, okay? Because if you stay inside and all you ever do is you work on telekinesis, okay, then you're working with relatively dead energy. Um, and I myself do like telekinesis and working with uh, inanimate objects because it teaches you a lot, but I can tell you this, one day, let's just say, I don't know, the monetary system goes down, or let's just say some massive earthquake happens which knocks out a whole bunch of stuff. Your ability to survive is going to be dependent upon how good you are within the natural system of the world. 
You're not going to be able to just stay inside and survive. You're not going to be able to just lock yourself away. You will have to come out at some point. You will have to start foraging for stuff. You will have to start uh, uh, finding your own food. And let me tell you something. The better relationship that you've made with nature and the system in general, the easier things are going to be for you. It makes your life a lot more efficient. So this, is, this works in terms of survival and everything else. The system is going to be way more inclined to help somebody it knows that it is full of love and full of harmony than it is going to be, try to help someone who is just there to rape the fields. Okay? So remember, one thing that I want to make uh, ultimately clear is that any system that you use energetic wise that you've asked, okay, and that you've developed a relationship with. And you should always be trying to develop a relationship out there with something, someone, because the better your relationship is with even your fellow man, the better it's going to be universally. Unconditional love, Michael Grubby, Bald Ministry.